time. It is now in order to consider amendment number 426 printed in part A of House Report 117405. For what purpose does the gentleman for Rhode Island seek recognition? Uh, Mr. Speaker, I have an amendment at the desk. The clerk will designate the amendment. Amendment number 426 printed in part A of House Report number 117-405 offered by Mr. Langevin of Rhode Island. Pursuant to House Resolution 1224, the gentleman from Rhode Island, Mr. Lavagin, and a member of post each will control five minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Rhode Island. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman from uh, Rhode Island is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, in this era of great power competition, we are in a race for top talent, and our continued military superiority depends on scientific breakthroughs and innovation. My amendment provides that if the Secretary of Defense determines it is in the national interest, uh, it would allow a pathway to citizenship for the best foreign talent to work in the U.S. national security innovation base and on defense research projects. We want the brightest minds in the world working for us, not our adversaries, and this amendment helps us in that race. Uh, and this chamber, uh, I should mention, has recognized the need uh, to face this challenge before, uh, during the consideration uh, in of, uh, fiscal year 2022, the National Defense Authorization Act, my amendment, was passed on the floor with bipartisan support, and I hope we will do it again today. So the U.S. has less than 5 percent of the world's population. So the majority of the best scientific minds will undoubtedly be born outside the U.S. borders. So we enjoy world-class universities and innovative uh, private sector that attract talent from around the world in critical technologies like physics, computer science, and biotechnology, but our uh, constricted pathways to residency and citizenship drive this talent into the arms of our economic competitors at best and our adversaries at worst. So we face intense opposition and intense competition from other countries who offer large research grants and expedited citizenship to lure this talent away. In a world where a small group of driven visionaries can upend the status quo, losing these gifted individuals puts us in danger of chasing future technological developments rather than leading them. So my amendment is modeled uh, after a 1949 law granting the director of the CIA the authority to obtain permanent residency for anyone deemed, and I quote, in the interest of national security or essential to the furtherance of national uh, intelligence message, message, missions. So this idea is not new. Today, the, though the Secretary of Defense has no mechanism to encourage immigration for researchers uh, with technical or scientific skills vital to national security. Under this amendment that I offer today, the Secretary of Defense will implement a competitive annual process to select top, the top 10 scientists with uh, technical expertise that would advance the development of critical technologies aligned with the National Defense Strategy and the National Defense Science and Technology Strategy and recommend them to the Secretary of Homeland, Sec Homeland Security for proper, robust processing and vetting. It is in our national security interest not only to have these scientists working on defense research on our behalf and their, innovative, uh, in, in their innovations within our economy, but also to prevent this talent from working for our adversaries' defense industrial base and economies. So this amendment has passed this chamber twice previously as an amendment, both to the fiscal year 2022 NDAA and to the America Competes Act. So I encourage my colleagues to support this amendment once again to ensure our continued military and technological superiority, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Rhode Island reserves the balance of his time. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I rise to claim time in opposition to the amendment. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, th this amendment allows the admission of scientists and technical experts from foreign countries to work on the national security innovation base. W without a clear provision forbidding foreign nationals from hostile regimes like China and Iran, we should strongly oppose this amendment. 
The Democrats' open border policy has produced the largest illegal mass migration in our nation's history. Since they took power, including deliberate releases and gotaways, the Democrats have allowed into our country an illegal population larger than that of the entire population of West Virginia. We have apprehended at the border scores of persons on the terrorist watch list, and we have no idea how many more have come in among the 800,000 gotaways who evaded apprehension uh, as the Border Patrol was overwhelmed processing these unprecedented numbers. The Democrats' unconditional surrender to the Taliban last year released more than 5,000 terrorists held at Bagram Base. Ten days later, one of those terrorists detonated the bomb that killed 10 Marines at Abbey Gate. We have no idea where the other 5,000 plus are today, but it's a good bet that more than a few have been among those gotaways coming across our open southern border. Obviously, the security of the United States is not high on the Democrats' list of concerns. Now, instead of addressing this national security crisis, the Democrats have pursued one measure after another to encourage still more immigration, legal and illegal, and this amendment should concern us all. Now, some of our greatest military breakthroughs have come from foreign-born scientists. The Manhattan Project comes to mind. But so, too, some of our worst security breakdowns have come from foreign scientists, and I do not trust this administration to know or even care about the difference. China, for example, is so intent on using our U.S. immigration system to steal our sensitive technologies that the Trump administration had to issue a proclamation suspending entry of certain Chinese students and researchers. The Trump administration found that, quote, the People's Republic of China is engaged in a wide-ranging and heavily resourced campaign to acquire sensitive United States technologies to bolster the modernization and capability of its military, unquote. The proclamation warned that, quote, students or researchers from the PRC studying beyond the undergraduate level are at high risk of being exploited or co-opted by the PRC, end quote. In fact, the Department of Homeland Security warned us in 2020 that the Chinese government requires its nationals to, quote, support, assist, and cooperate with state intelligence work. Now, the idea for this amendment came at least in part from the Commission on Artificial Intelligence, which called for, quote, increasing China's brain drain. So clearly, the green cards contemplated under this amendment would go to Chinese nationals. The last thing we should do is make it easy for the Chinese Communist Party to gain access to our national security innovation base work, Department of Defense research, or other critical technologies. I would also note that, sadly, our new woke Department of Defense does not have a great track record regarding immigration programs. Many of you may remember that the Department of Defense supported and encouraged the military ascensions uh, vital to the national interest, or MAVNI, program through which foreign nationals were able to enlist in the U.S. military. Once enlisted, they were eligible to nationalize. The Obama administration was forced to halt this program when it was discovered that the Department of Defense had allowed some Chinese spies to enlist in the military. Now let that sink in. The Department of Defense allowed Chinese spies to enlist in the U.S. military. Add to this the Biden family's questionable financial ties to China and the ingratiation of Chinese spies with several members of Congress, and this amendment becomes most disturbing, and accordingly, I urge the House to oppose it. I've got no further speakers, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back the balance. Uh, gentleman reserves the balance of the time. Uh, gentleman from Rhode Island is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Biscuit. May I inquire how much time I have remaining? The gentleman has a minute and a half. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I yield to, uh, myself to this time as I may consume. Uh, we have before us a, a, a concept that already exists in law, that already uh, has that authority uh, with the director of the CIA. This, uh, this uh, bill before us would allow this authority to be exercised now by the Secretary of Defense for only 10 individuals. I should say, and it waives no uh, uh, special uh, vetting or security background checks. There would be thorough background checks before any pathway to citizenship 
uh, would be uh, would be given. So uh, at this point, I have no further speakers, and uh, I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Rhode Island Reserves, the gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, the Democrats' record speaks for itself. No concern for the dire national security implications of their open borders policy. No concern for the infiltration of hostile foreign agents into our military. No concern for the ingratiation of foreign agents into our legislative and executive branches. But Americans should be concerned. They should be very concerned. And until there's a sea change in the attitude of the ruling Democrats toward our national safety, our security, and our sovereignty, amendments like this should be utterly rejected. I yield back. The gentleman uh, yields back. Uh, gentleman from Rhode Island is recognized. There would be no uh, passes given. This is, it would be thorough uh, background checks that would, uh, would occur. Uh, experts agree that we must now uh, keep the brightest minds working on our behalf, or we risk ceding the, the commercial benefits of technological development as well as sacrificing our military's technological technological advantage. Our adversaries are focusing on closing the capability gap in critical technologies, and we must respond. They are not standing still. We need to continue to keep the uh, technological edge that we enjoy here in our country, and I urge the support of this amendment, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Balance of his time, pursuant to House Resolution 1224, the previous question is zero on the amendment offered by the gentleman from Rhode Island. The question is on the amendment. Those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. no. The opinion of the chair, the ayes have of the amendment. The is agreed to. Gentleman from California. On that, I ask for the yeas and nays. Pursuant to Section 3S of House. Resolution 8, the yeas and nays are ordered. Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20, further proceedings on this question are postponed. The Chair understands that Amendment Number 437 would not be offered. The Chair understands that Amendment Number 440 would not be offered at this time. Chair understands that amendment number 444 would not be offered at this time. The chair understands that amendment number 446 would not be offered. It is now in order to consider amendment number 44 